And also, about a week and a half ago, I installed Ganesh in my uh, Fedora machine, and everything just work, work, works great, except for uh, proprietary codecs. So if I go to YouTube with my Flash, uh, uh, with my Ganesh plugin, it will not work unless I install some proprietary software, which is the codecs to play the thing. So. Well, just, just very briefly on uh, Ganesh for a second. Um, I, I tested this, um, and now I hasten to add this is only my experience of it, and it could well be that I've been tinkering in areas I shouldn't have been tinkering in, so um, it's, it's resulted in the effect that I got. But I found that it swallowed memory um, when I was trying to run when I was trying to run it. When I would installed, it swallowed memory. I can't remember the actual, because I, I didn't make a note of it at the time. Um, but it's, I, I found a real issue. Now, it might be, it might well be an issue that I've created for myself um, by fiddling around with something else. Um, but it, it was something that I did notice. Um, it what still about wasn't. Flash? What about? Did you see yeah, it, it was. Flash? Yeah, it, it's the same. According to, yeah, according to my um, system monitor, it was it ate about three times as much as Flash did um, when I ran it um, when I had it installed. Um, like I said, I don't know whether that's something that I've messed around with and it's it's, it's happened because I didn't really investigate it that much because I wasn't uh, looking to do a sort of comparison or test of uh, Ganache, so I, I didn't bother. Um, uh, so I just thought I'd throw that in. I didn't know if anybody else listening to this has experienced that or whether that's just uh, myself, but um, I, I thought I'd mention that. Um, sorry, Roy, uh, you were saying sorry. It's I'll a very uh, strange thing to attach to a browser to define a certain region within the browser, uh, which is supposed to invoke, you know, active script and all kinds of things flying about. And it's very adverse to the notion of how the web's supposed to work. Uh, and Flat and Adobe is trying to spin things and to say, well, it's rich experience. They call it the REA, uh, which is supposed to have the rich insights. You're supposed to think this is better than the, better than the normal content. I, I think that's terrible because it barely gets even to search engines, although they try to now kind of index some things, but they, ha they have no way of linking deep, uh, deep within the page into a certain type of content. And you have lots of reasons not to use Flash mm -hmm. Very detailed articles about that, um, but when it comes to performance, personally, when I when I try and use Flash and Linux, it's uh, the browser doesn't tend to recover the resources too well. And even when I close the browser, I think because of Flash, it doesn't shut down properly, and I have to do something extra or to wait quite a few seconds before uh, it's pulled out of the, as a process because the process is running externally as a Binary. Basically, I have my browser, which is the normal process, and then it defines a uh, a kind of a canvas for an external process to come in to intrude the browser and to run within a box. And that's just not the way browser is supposed to work. And 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 they have they have only one single person to work on this whole thing in Adobe. I mean, that's that's almost insulting. Uh, it's strange because I mean, out, it's out out of preference, and this is uh, just my view. But I mean, I, I would go, I would still go with Flash. Um, I the experience that you've had with Flash, it sounds very similar to the experience I had with Ganache. So um, it's I haven't had any problems with Flash. I found, I found it integrates perfectly. Uh, there's no well, there was no there was no issues with mine in regards to Flash. Um, however, like I say, my my computing habits are a little bit of um, Proprietary mixed in uh, with open source software. I've never made a secret of that. So they're j just my ten pence worth. I'll throw in there. Um, the, the, moving the, on. Yeah, Sorry. I was just gonna say uh, a few more things. Not from the past few days, but especially from mm -hmm. today. Uh, we have the release of KDE, KDE 4.5.6, or I'm not sure. Just to be sure, I, it's 4.5. Point something. And it's possibly the last release before uh, three point, sorry, before 4.6, uh, which is scheduled, as far as I know, for January. Uh, so that's that's quite good news, and it's a very early release. It was supposed to be sometime before Christmas. Uh, and then you have the Gnome Shell and Zeitgeist, uh, which was recently ported to KDE as well. And uh, so pe people start to kind of see these desktop environments, which are extremely important for uh, Linux on the you know so-called desktop. It's really mm. essential we have these things in good form, and so you know GNOME Shell is coming along just just pretty well. And then you have GPT <laughs> from Canonical for you know so it's supposed to be including the next version of of Ubuntu. 
Uh, and then you have uh, Myth TV, and you have all sorts of distros. RabbitMQ 2.2 is being released. Uh, um, all sorts of things. I don't think I have any important news, to be honest. And nothing well, too major as far well, as uh, last week's so, news. Well, what I'll do, um, I've, I've got a very quick story, and I'll go over to uh, Gordon, because I believe he's um, <clears throat> got a couple of other things he wants mentioning. Um, first thing, just a point I forgot to bring up from before, Roy, um, and this is my personal opinion only, and I'm saying this more to the people listening to this show. Um, be very dubious of any user who claims to be an average user and uses the term feature-rich. Um, in my experience, everybody who's described uh, anything as being feature-rich or that that type of wording isn't what they seem to be. Um, it's a very, in my experience, this is a very um, PR uh, term used by companies to try and uh, imply, yeah, it, it, to try and to try and promote experiences which um, you'll get from using their software. And it's very fake, and it, it's usually it's uh, it's usually a very hollow statement, um, not backed up with any substance, and used as more of a colourful word to uh, make something sound a lot better than it really is. Um, and that's my personal view. I, I don't know what. Uh, Roy's and Gordon's take is on it, but certainly my experience has shown me that. Um, just thought, quick, just sorry, I just wanted to add that in very quickly. Um, now, if I may, just um, a very brief piece of news in regards to Internet Explorer. Um, people who maybe listen to this and still with Windows have probably heard many people telling them that uh, Internet Explorer latest versions are more secure in the, the same old spiel that they get uh, every time a new version of something from Microsoft comes out. Um, and this is an article from the Register. And it's uh, making note of um, a new exploit has been discovered um, in the latest versions of all most recent versions of Internet Explorer, even when using the protected mode. Um, I assume that's Internet Explorer's extra safe, secure mode that you can put it into. Um, but apparently there is an exploit um, and an exploit has been discovered in that. Um, it's, uh, it ex describes it all on the register. I'll be putting the link onto the show notes so you can read through that if you're so interested or have Internet Explorer. You might want to bear it in mind. Um, Roy, before I put over to Roy, and yeah. Gordon, is there anything else you want to add? I was going to say something about the feature. You, you know the situation where you basically have a false state economy or you have these, uh, actually, quite conversely, you might have a situation where a person, no matter what you say, there is some form of position to you. It can be something about choice or fragmentation or in the sense in the uh, sense of feature richness or whatever they want to, to call these things. Uh, if your software doesn't have enough features, I'll say, well, your software does not have enough features, it's not as advanced as mine. Mm -hmm. uh, now, in Linux and very often in, in the desktop environments, you tend to have even more options and more things you can do than in uh, a very rigid interface like a, a Mac, Mac OS X or Windows, and then what they say, it's very complicated, you have too many options, it's very confusing, you know, you have too many things implemented, but it's not easy to use, and this is also what happens with things like uh, the iPhone, which doesn't have so many features, I've, I've, I've seen them, I've used them as uh, an experience with somebody else, and wanted to see what it's like, and it's a very simple thing, like it runs the game, but you don't get many features out of that, you don't have flexibility, you don't have much uh, uh, customization power. And, and it, basically, you can you can barely jailbreak the thing. So it's just the way they give it to you. That's the way it's supposed to work. That's the way it's supposed to do. You can barely change anything. And uh, and one thing that came, uh, I now find found out. You know how we usually say in China things are quite different when it comes, especially to Apple market share. So in China, if you don't use Microsoft, you're not so likely to use Apple because these companies barely have presence in certain places. They aim for a different type of market. Now, it turns out that 50% uh, of the smartphones sold in China are using Android now. So that's over half of them. Uh, and some of them might use Forex of these things, and they might have a kind of a Chinese customized version of, uh, of Android. And that's, that's, of course, using Linux inside. Uh, and, and if you come to think which is the biggest market in terms of computers, you know, it's not the... United States anymore since since mm. 2000 and something. Um, so so that's that's pretty major news. I thought uh, you can actually say you can see Linux becoming the majority among the platforms uh, using Linux, especially now Symbian is uh, officially being shut down. The website of the of the Symbian Foundation is being shut down. It seems like Nokia uh, is going to 
have some choices and the, the most obvious choice is to move to Migo, which is based on uh, Linux and it uses LSB and GNU and all kinds of very nice libraries and it's a very open platform even compared to 